Praise the Lord and God bless you. We had a slight technical difficulty, had to restart. We are here today gathered in the name of Jesus Christ to give him the praise that he is worthy of. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We are in uh, the last weeks of the year 2022. For some, they are saying, I'll be glad when this year is over. For some, they are saying this year went by too fast. For some, it went by too slow. We have had tragedies in our lives. We have had situations to happen. But through it all, we made it yet another day. We made it to see another sunrise. And with the grace of God, we will see a sunset. The sun doesn't rise or set based on how we feel or what we are doing. And if you want to test that, get you a nice comfortable chair. Get you a bottle of water, a cup of coffee. Turn on some music, or get a book. And if you just sit there for 24 hours... Time is still going to go by. The sun is going to rise. The sun is going to set. The wind is going to blow. Life is going to go on. So let's get in mind and keep in mind and fix in our minds that we have no control over what God is doing. We are to get in line with what he is doing. And if there's anything going on in our lives that we feel is unfair or not right or unpleasant, the best thing and the only thing we can do is go to God and lay our issues at the altar and pray and have faith that God, who is the only one who can change our situations. Now, now I'm going to stop right there because a lot of people say you can change your own situation. In some cases, you you can have an effect on your situation, but you do not have the power to make your situation change the way some people make it seem as though you can, well, if you need a new car, just just, just go get a new one. Well, that's easy to say. You need to move it and just, just, see, sometimes it's a process. And throughout the process, God is the one that gives you the breath. God is the one that gives you the intellect and the strength and the wherewithal to do what it is you are trying to do. So without God, you can do nothing. With God, you can do everything. It's very simple. As we get close to the end of the year, I I have mixed feelings about things and There's a lot of things going on. Every time you turn on the news, you hear tragedy. Someone is shot. Someone is is hit. Someone is missing. They find them deceased. It's a lot going on in the world. And I believe that these are distractions to make you or make a person want to question the integrity of God. The integrity of God. The question comes up, well, why would a God that's so loving allow? And why would he this and and baby? See, we have to understand that these are all souls. And everyone on this planet and everything in this universe belongs to God. Therefore, God can do whatever it is God wants to do with whomever and whatever God wants to do because it all belongs to him. We may see things and don't understand, but see, God sees the bigger picture. God knows what that soul, that person was going to be. God understands and sees things in a way that we will never see. The song says, we'll understand things better by and by. I believe in my heart and soul that even once we who who aspire and make it into heaven, there are going to be some things we will never know and understand about God because, first of all, that's God's business. 
And, and if you want to test that theory, when someone asks you a personal question about you and what you did with something that you have, you're going to say, that's none of your business. How I treat my child and how I raise my child and how I cook my food and how I drive my car, that is my business. So if we say that about the things that we have, how much more can God say everything that is created, everything that is seen, everything that is known is mine? I, I'm looking right now at two flashlights on the table. They both belong to me. If I decide to take one of those flashlights and throw it out the door, it's my business. If I decide to give them away, that's my business. Someone said, man, why did you give them, them two good flashlights away? Because it's my business. So God can do whatever it is God wants to do because, first of all, he's God. He's sovereign. He's omnipotent. He knows all. He does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and is questioned by no one. And if you do question him, it don't matter. And he answers to no one. Let's take this, for example, Job. You know the story. Job started to say some off-the-wall crazy stuff to God. I wish I wasn't and. The day that I was this, and I and the, and I'm who Job, you 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 calm down. Oh, they're too late. In essence, God said, "I am going to ask you a series of questions, and you must answer me." Then he appeared in the whirlwind and, and started asking questions that Job had no answer. But God told him, "You better answer me." Where were you when I established the foundations? Where were you when I set A and Z? Where were you when I discovered and made? Where were you when I was talking to myself because no one else was created? Where were you when I established the heavens from the earth? Where were you when I set time in motion? Where were you when I separated light from dark and created light and dark? Where were you when, the, when I was in nothingness and, and you weren't even a thought? Where were you? Who are you to question my sovereignty? Well, you let all this stuff happen to me. I didn't think that was fair. I didn't ask you that. I was bragging on you. What about my servant, Job? And some people say, well, that, that wasn't fair to Job. Well, see, that word fair, it's not fair that my rent is high. It, it ain't fair that gas is expensive. It ain't fair that I went to the store yesterday and eggs was three forty four a dozen. It, it ain't fair that I can't just snap my fingers and have three new cars and two houses. It ain't fair. Sometimes not being fair is a catalyst in the fuel you need to get to being in a state of what you consider fair. Now, was it fair, since we want to talk about what God does, was it fair that they beat his son? Was it fair that they plucked the beard out of, out of his face? Was it fair that he came down to save his people and they rejected him. Was it fair that he carried his own cross after being beaten almost to death? Was it fair that he left the, beautif the beautification and the beauty of heaven to come down and to reconnect the creation back to the creator when he could have said, no, destroy them and create somebody who is obedient? Was it fair? That Jesus did no wrong at all. Healed the sick, raised the dead. Fed the multitude. Gave sight to the blind. What did he say to Lazarus after he was dead and stinking? Lazarus, what? Come forth. What did Lazarus do? He got up. So was it fair? But he died for your sins. Was it fair that on the cross when he said it is finished, every sin of the world, past, present and future was placed upon him? Was it fair? No. So let's stop saying what's fair and what's not. It's a lot of stuff even I can say, well, you know, it's not fair. I don't have a 2025 truck outside. It's not fair to me, in my opinion, that I don't have seven houses and, 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 and you know, and I, it's, it's, I don't think that's fair. 
God said, I didn't ask you. In in the case of, uh, uh, let, let's, let's turn this into a parent-child scenario. You tell your child something to do. They say, well, that's not fair. I didn't ask you that. Then you can break it down and say, is it fair that I have to wash your clothes and, and feed you and make sure you are, you are uh, uh, secure and a roof over your head and a floor under your feet and hot and cold running water? Is it fair that I have to do these things for you and I ask you to do one or two little insignificant things and you tell me it's not fair and you question who I am and what I'm doing? Is it fair? No. I didn't ask you if it was fair. It wasn't fair when my mother, bless her soul, told me what to do and I didn't want to do it. And I looked at her in the face and, and I was about to say something and, and one of them eyebrows went up and I was like, oh, okay, okay. That, that means if I proceed with this conversation, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to have to not answer some questions, but receive some, some disciplinary action upon my body that at that time I was not uh, uh, willing to accept. So was it fair that in the middle of the baseball game, she called me and I had to go to the grocery store? Was it fair? No. Did she ask me? No. Did I go? Yes. So was it fair? I never said it was, never said it will be. But we are not talking about a God that's petty. I studied Greek mythology and them was some petty. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad God is not like that. Petty. Committing fornication and adultery. You're a God. What are you doing? You're a petty. You don't serve me. I'm going to strike you down. You don't. What? Every time I see something like that, oh, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm so glad Yahweh not like like that. Because I know. You know, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Yes. I ain't playing. Political correct is out the window. I don't care. I ain't playing. If we got from God what we deserve, we would all be in bad shape. I don't care how nice you think you are. If we receive a punishment, the punishment from God that we deserve on an ongoing basis, we would all be walking around in perpetual torment. But why'd you say that? God can't stand a liar, won't tarry in his sight. God can't stand a haughty heart. God can't stand this. God can't stand that. God hates sin. So he's angry with the sinner every day. So every day you wake up full of sin and not trying to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, who it wasn't fair that he got beat for us, but he did it anyway. Then you can't say nothing to God except I'm sorry. Even the sinner should just say, you know what? God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm sinning in your sight. I'm sorry that I have not received the the, uh, salvation that your son paid for. I'm sorry that I haven't been baptized in the name of your son for the remission of my sins. I'm sorry. But I think I digress in this case. Not sure. So I'll partially, I'll half digress. Because it's so easy. It's so easy. People have complicated salvation. You know what they have done to salvation? They have made it religious. God has God didn't send his son to establish a religion. He didn't send his son to establish the Catholicism or the Protestantism or the this. He came down to set the captives free. When you are in a, a situation, I'll make sure I'm careful with this. Where you have to be bound by all these rules and regulations and stipulations in order to get to God. When God has already established a way through Jesus, then that organization or way or cult or scenario is wrong. Oh, somebody might call me on this one. What are you trying to say? I'm saying what I said. Jesus when he when when he gave up the ghost, let's let's pause for a second. They did not kill Jesus. Oh, they killed Jesus. No, they didn't. He didn't allow them to have the power over him to kill him. He gave up the ghost into your hands. I, Jesus Christ, 
command my spirit. Why? Because I've done what I came here to do. In the meeting before time, and you established what I was going to do, I agreed to the terms, I signed it, I came down, I fulfilled it, and now it is time for me to leave. It is done. There's nothing else for me to do. They rejected me. Okay, I opened it up to the Gentiles. There you go. I made a way. I, I even in my death, I didn't even rest after I gave up the ghost. I went down and set the captives free who before I came had no way to get back to you. I went down there and essentially opened the door and said, hey, jingle, jingle. I got the keys. Come with me. Now, foolishly, I wasn't there. There was no cameras. But I'm, I would imagine in, in my finite mind that a few people said no. We're going to wait for the Messiah. Now, now listen, people. If I'm in jail and somebody come with the key and say, come on, and they open the door with the key, guess what? I'm, until I get to the gate and they tell me I can't go out, I'm going with him. Who else <clears throat> prior to that time had went down to Hades and opened up the door and didn't throw somebody in, but opened the door and said, let's go. So right then they should have been, you know what? The first one opened that door and say, let's go. I'm going with them. That should have been their mindset when they first got there. The first one opened that door and say, let's go. I'm going with them. So I'm sure some stage he's like, okay, th this is it. I only had three days. I, I can't, I'm not going to. Okay, all right. A lot went with him happily. And that door closed. And I'm sure someone said, hey, I think we should have went with him. Mm -hmm. And a few others was, no, we're going to wait for the Messiah. That's going to be a long wait. Faith in God. Trust in God. There's a lot of things I'm I'm looking for God to do. And I read something this morning that said just envision the keys in your hand. Envision the deed, the title, the 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 walking through your warehouse, the walking through your new house with the upstairs and downstairs and basement. Walk through in your mind the, the seven toilets or whatever you want. Walk it in, in your mind. Envision the new whatever. Envision the, the, the healing. Envision that child coming home. Envision that disobedient boy or girl being obedient. Envision that husband or wife stop cheating. Envision uh, uh, the health of the loved one in whom you placed at the altar. Envision it in your mind. Faith, the size of a, the size of a mustard seed. God is so cool. Now, God could have easily said, faith the size of a bowling ball. Well, none of us make it. We you all be lost. God found the smallest seed that produced the biggest plant and said, just, just this much. And then this heart, man, God is so cool that when you don't have enough faith, it says, go to him who gives faith and he will get. So I have a quarter of a mustard seed. God said, okay, I'll give you the other three quarters. How cool is that? Father, I have no faith at all. God said, I'll give you some. I'll give you what you need. Mm -hmm. I will give you what you need so I can bless you. How? Man, that is cool. Who else going to do that? Mm -hmm. I will give you what you need so I can bless you. It's like going to the store. I need I need to buy this, 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 uh, this brand new camera. 32 megapixels and all the lenses, but I ain't got no money. And then the man say, I will give you the money. To give to me so I can give you the camera. Yep. Then I can go home and say, hey, honey, I didn't buy this. <laughs> the man gave me the money so I can buy it from him. And she's going to look at me and say, right. Now I'm going to show him the receipt. And she can call the store. See, my wife, that's an inside joke. My wife knows what I'm talking about. But God is so good, you can have a 100 credit rating and go in and get a 2023 car with no down payment and a low car note. And the dealer himself, when you drive away, will wake up and say, what did I just do? And then something might talk to him in his ear, God. Mm -hmm. What God? See, I'm looking, and I'm trying to hold myself together. Boy, I felt something hit me just now. Jesus. Mm. 
Give me a second. A but God moment. Let me explain that real quick. I need some. I ain't got the money, but God. Mm. Mm -hmm. I need to move, but I don't but God. I need a new but God. My kid but God. What? I need a but God moment. What are you saying? But God stepped in and said with your low credit, your no down payment, your inability to walk, I made a way for you to walk and get the things that you need. Why? Because with faith the size of a mustard seed, you can cause me, God, to look down upon your situation and move that mountain and say, get thee out of his way. That man, that woman believes in me so hard that they have no legs, but yet they walk. They have no eyes, but yet they see how because I'm God. You know what I just saw in my mind? Y'all gonna think I'm crazy. Don't call the police on me. I have to take a shot. Woo! Trying to hold it back. It ain't working. Jesus. I'm so full of faith <laughs> that I could see a man walking down the street with no legs. <laughs> I'm you talking about you on his no walking upright as if he's five seven with no legs, no arms, but he's drinking a cup of coffee. Why? Because God can do whatever God wants to do. And all we have to do is believe. People want to believe in zombies and vampires. You know what? I put my trust in God. Yes. What do you mean a man ain't got no legs? He's walking. He's walking as if he had legs. Just walking. And he looking like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you staring at me? You have no legs, but you're walking. Okay. You have no eyes, but you can see. Okay. Why? I show, but God. So if you can imagine something like that, what's asking for a car or a house or a deliverance or a financial blessing? God can make anything happen for his pleasure. Why? But God. But God what? But God said so. That is physically impossible. Okay. It was physically impossible to create the universe with nothing. It's physically impossible for Lazarus to come up from the dead. It is physically and was physically impossible for them dry bones to come back to life. It was physically impossible for Jesus to walk on the water, but yet he did it. The storm was raging. He was down there asleep and got up and said, peace. Be still. They said, who is this man that the even the nature, the, the elements understand and believe him? The demons, when he walked in the room, trembled and said, why do you torment us before the time? They understood and acknowledged that this man was Jesus. See, the devil hate me. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Because I won't give up. I ask myself, man, why don't you just give up and do what? Go back to sinning? Die and go to hell? Give up and do what? I've come too far. I've come too far. I'm about to be 50. In 30 days, I will be 55 years old. I've come too far. God has been too good to me. I've heard guns chamber. I, I've had been in accidents where I shouldn't have made it. I've had things happen in my life where I shouldn't even be alive right now. But God said live. So you want to hate on me and don't support me? Fine, don't. Don't. Because there's a legion of a plethora oh, of yes, angels. Yes, yes. There's God with Jesus at his right hand. That says, I believe in you. Oh, okay, well, you know, it gets a little lonely, but as long as you believe in me, I'm going to be I. Right. See, that's a West Side term, I, right. you know, not politically correct. I don't want to be all right. I want to be I. Right. <laughs> when you I, right, you good. I want God to give me the head. And the, cut it. Yeah. Oh, God. Get, oh, yeah, I got the nod. I got the nod in the point. See, y'all don't know about the nod in the point. When somebody back in the day when they hit, oh, you were good. Hey, man, can I get that? And you get that nod in that point. Oh, you was in there. No words said. You were, How you know he's good? He, I got the nod in the point. Oh, well, well, there you go. That's that's just like you go to the bank. Did you get the nod in the point? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you good. Go ahead and get the car, the money, the house. 
the wife, the kids, the health, the strength, the deliverance, the salvation, the mm -hmm. healing. Go ahead. You got the nod and the point on the cross. That was the equivalency Hallelujah. of Jesus giving you the nod and the point. You down there looking up and got pointing. Woo, Jesus. I got you. But I sin. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sin. I know. You covered me. I got you. So imagine that. I got you. Through it all, I got you. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fail. I got you. I'm going to make mistakes. I got you. Mm -hmm. You good. I'm good. You good. I'm straight. You straight. <clears throat> it's all right. It's all right. Why? Because Jesus said it. Now, <clears throat> back in the day when your boy said, I got you, sometimes he didn't. He was lying. He had you for that moment to give you that sense of, you know, get out of my face. Or he had you for that moment and then he couldn't fulfill it. See, Jesus is the only man that when he say, I got you, he got you. And I'm going to end it with this. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave <clears throat> his only begotten son. You, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life aka i got you thank you jesus no. <laughs> nothing else to say for more information about this ministry and to find out mm -hmm. what else are we doing and if you want to find out more of how god got you call me i like to, i love talking about jesus I love talking about Jesus, tools, camera equipment. You know, and I brag on my wife, but nobody want to hear me do that. Because I say, I got the best wife in the world. And somebody else will say, well, I got the best wife in the world. Well, you ain't got my wife. So, you know, I got in my world, in my mind, the best. And it's not just because I smell food cooking either. I love my wife because she's my wife. And she put up with me. That's a lot. That's a lot. Y'all think I'm all, oh, look at, no. <laughs> <laughs> We we can men can be a trip, then I'm a pastor on top of that. Oh my God. I look at her sometime like, tell me how you do it. I would have not put up with me. But God knows. God knows. God's got you, everybody. For more information, give us a call, 773-593-4972, or visit us on the web at www.he'sawondermusicministries.com. O-R-G. Ladies and gentlemen, God's got you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until we come together again and close out this year, have a great day. <laughs>